guys, Jonah back here, back with another beer review. And uh, this one's special because it's Supermarket Sunday. <laughs> That's why I've got my chopper's uh, hat on because it's British Superbike, um, which is, yeah, pretty cool. They're over at Thruxton today. Well, they were there yesterday as well. Um, nice, very nice. I like Thruxton. Used to be my used to be my local track, whereas now Lydon Hill um, is my local track, which is where I crashed and broke some ribs years ago. But anyway, enough of that, because today we're talking about supermarket beer. Um, we have got this one, which is good and bad. Let's see if it will focus on here. Uh, obviously it says Citra, which is the Citra Session IPA. Uh, which is absolute rubbish. It's not a session IPA, it's a pale ale. Um, there is no such thing as a session IPA. That is rubbish. I hate it. Anyway, it's a light and refreshing citra IPA, fair dues, at four and a half percent. Okay, so it's a light one. And if you can see there, it says brewed and bottled at Hall and Woodhouse, who make the Badger beers. Um, and this was brought at Sainsbury's. Um, and I quite even quite like the um, the bottle design. It's quite new, quite trend. Well, I say new. Uh, this looks like a kind of postmodern kind of art kind of thing, um, which is not modern at all. <laughs> not now. But it's got a nice neck chief as well, and it's got the branded Taste the Difference cap, which I think is really good. And for a change, we have got an actual proper bottle. So not quite a pint. This is a 500 milliliter um, bottle. But as a result of that, I can't use my normal tasting glass. I have to use a beer glass, so come on. And uh, I got this on special offer, which is another thing that I like to do, as you well know, dear viewer. And um, yeah, I think it was one pound 20. £1.20p for almost a pint. That's not doing too bad. I still think a bargain is £1 for a pint. Um, but maybe that's my head stuck in my old student days. But it was possible back then. And it kind of happens now, but very, very rarely. But one twenty for a 500 that's not bad at all. We are going to use the Venus opening uh, bottle opener, which, as you know, if you've been watching this channel, was uh, gifted to me by Zippy, Zippy Viking. Um, so cheers to you, brother. Thank you very much. And this has been in the, the fridge. Oh, a little bit of smokage is always nice to see. Citra, as I have said many times before, is the most grown hop in the whole world so it's interesting that we've got a beer i've seen these before um and supermarkets used to do these all the time but not so much these days they used to do single hop uh beers i'm not saying this is a smash beer it's probably got different malts in there but it's a single hop beer so that means you can really appreciate what a hop is doing um, and in this case, citra. So let's get this into a glass. And like I say, because it's a 500, assuming there's no head, oh, there isn't any head at all, that's a bit more aggressive, will easily fit in this glass. Because this is a pint glass. So let's get, let's get a quick photo. There we go, citra. There's the beer. A silly face. Kiss for luck, we're on our way. We've only just begun. There we go, what's that? About a quarter, very small head, uh, just off white, which is cool. Um, because it's been in the fridge, it's kind of frosted the glass a little bit, but look at that, super, super clear. You can definitely see everything through there. What would you say that color is? Copper, maybe a dark amber? something like that. Trying to get my vernacular uh, up a bit because obviously I, now I'm doing, well, I'm doing it volunteering, but 
I am a county uh, beer taster, beer judge um, for Kent. So that's all good. All right, not too much on the nose, to be honest. Although I'm getting a little bit of residual sweetness. I'm getting a kind of, I should be getting grass and green notes, but I'm, and they are there, but I'm getting a little bit of fruit, a tiny bit of citrus, um, maybe a zesty kind of like a limey kind of thing going on. But we're also getting the green kind of hedgerow uh, in the morning after the rain, that kind of lovely smell. As you walk down, you know, the, uh, the footpath, wherever you are, I love those kind of things. And sometimes aromas and smells, they trigger things from your memory that you think you'd lost. So I'm up for the sensorial kind of thing at the moment. It is my bag. Anyway, let us dive in. Four and a half percent. This should be a good one. Cheers and beers, guys. Hmm. Interesting, because I'm also getting that citrus is there, but I'm also getting a little bit of kind of peachiness, which isn't synonymous with uh, citra hops, um, which is weird. But I'm also getting a lot of kind of wateriness. Now, I would not be surprised if this is kind of watered down a little bit to get to the four and a half percent. Um, and then carbonated, uh, not force carbonated, maybe not, maybe I'm being unjust, but because it's a supermarket beer, because it's so cheap, um, their margins are very small, so they want to be shifting lots of this stuff. Um, so the easiest way to make money um, is to brew a beer and then, or maybe to do a, a mash and then water it down a little bit um, to get your starting gravity so uh, you're making money off every beer. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I have already a lovely tide line. Absolutely fantastic. We will see if that continues. Also, I've noticed something that perhaps I should have showed you before, but there is some writing on the back here. It says a hop zinger of a pale ale. So they've called it an IPA, a session IPA, and now they're calling it a pale ale which is exactly what I think this beer is. It's a pale ale, not an IPA. Uh, brewed in the heart of Dorset. Yep. Uh, the malt bale, premium malted barley with a touch of crystal. Um, yep, sounds like an IPA recipe uh, to produce a medium bodied pale ale. So again, they're talking about pale ale, not IPA. The way of this beer comes from the revered citra hops. Provide their magic in the form of citrus notes. Yeah, I was getting those. Grapefruit, mango, and lime. Mmm. I was getting the lime. I was said peach, but yeah, mango would kind of fit. Grapefruit, mm, not so much for me anyway. Uh, this gives a real zing uh, to the aroma, a long-lasting hot flavour, and aftertaste without being too bitter. Nice. They've even suggested the pairing of food, which is a cherry tart. Whoever cherry is, I'll drink to you. <laughs> cherry tart. Right, let's dive in for some more. Oh, another lovely tide line, and the first one is still at the top, even though it's dripping down the glass a little bit. But I have been talking to you, dear viewer. That's probably why. Oh. If you have not done so already, why not join the Jonna Army by clicking subscribe? And while you're there, why not like the video too? It means a lot to me. Cheers and beers. Um, yeah, grapefruit, no, not so much. Lime, I'm glad they said lime and, and not lemon, because um, I was definitely getting lime. Maybe, maybe there is a little bit of pithiness, and maybe for me, that's what I call it, but perhaps that's what they're calling grapefruit. 
um, which would kind of make sense. It's kind of bitter, kind of uh, fruit, isn't it? Um, but I, I think that's a kind of pithiness. Um, but yeah, I can kind of see maybe grapefruit. That's where it comes in. So that's all through. Um, I wouldn't say it's that long. Reasonably bitter for such a light ale. Um, but it's not, it's more watery than a kind of quenching, juicy kind of thing. Um, so you could drink a lot of these on a nice sunny afternoon in the summer. Um, down in Blandford near the Forum. Um, <laughs> Hall and Woodhouse. I've, I've put, I think I've driven past there a few times. And um, I really like the Badger beers. And also I've been to the Chichester pub. Um, the Gribble Inn, um, where their uh, their fuzzy duck was it fuzzy duck? Can't remember. But uh, they sold the recipe to uh, Hall and Woodhouse, and they brewed uh, Thirsty Ferret. Um, but the original one is actually in the Gribble Inn. So if you're ever down that way, if you're ever near Chichester, um, why not stop in at the Gribble Inn? Tell them Jonna sent you, and definitely have a pint of fuzzy duck. Cheers and beers. Oh, this is actually a really nice beer. Ooh, pardon me. It does have a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of caramel kind of going on. Um, but because it's such a watery beer, um, you have to very much seek those things out. Um, but you have to have a little bit of sweetness to balance the kind of the hoppy bitterness there. Um, unless you want a super bitter beer, which is absolutely fine. Um, if you're going to do that, you'd have to you'd have to leave the alcohol content a bit higher. Five, five and a half to six percent. <laughs> wow. And there is quite a bit of carbonation in there. And this is what happens, dear viewer, when you, you usually, oh God. You usually drink 330 cans on camera and all of a sudden you're faced by a 500 milliliter bottle. It's basically a pint. Um, <laughs> so you're trying to drink it fast and then what happens? You start burping. So I apologise, but not that much. And dear viewer, if you've stuck with Uncle Jonna for a while, you'll know that this does happen during my beer review. It's a sign of quality, in fact. Like an Arabian dinner um, with the Sultan. You can't finish your dinner until you do a huge belch. Uh, and apparently that's considered, you know, you're heartily well fed then. Um, so, yeah, I've heartily had a nice beer today. Um, yeah, it's a shame that they can't uh, decide whether it's a pale ale or an IP, a session IPA, in fact. I think, um, to give them their dues, I think uh, Hall and Woodhouse have called it a pale ale. And then, when they sent it to Sainsbury's, the marketing department in Sainsbury's have said, oh, we'll sell more if we call it a session IPA, because that's on vogue, it's on fashion. Um, but everything, it looks like, the tasting notes and everything, are referring to this as a pale ale um, and not an IPA. Um, okay. An IPA is an India Pale Ale, I know that, but I think we can uh, read between the lines and think this beer was originally designed as a normal Pale Ale, and then some clever spark who probably doesn't drink beer at all, they probably drink gin and tonic, dear viewer, um, has decided that they're going to market this as a session IPA, uh, which, as I say, is an anathema, is an anathema, yeah. Um, like a plastic glass or to boldly go. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. A session IPA. It's like a strong, a, a weak, a weak strong beer. That's what they're calling it. And it's absolute rubbish. It's a pale ale. Hall and Woodhouse know that it's a pale ale. But uh, Sainsbury's, those marketing department who probably got a bonus, uh, yeah, you should, uh, should get rid of those fuckers because it's lies. Anyway, hopefully they sold a lot. <laughs> mm. 
took more lines on there. The top one, which was here, is now a dot. And everything else has melted. There's the second one, third, fourth. Boom. All done. Thank you very much, dear viewer, for listening to my uh, my nonsense on your supermarket Sunday. Um, hopefully it's brought some amusement to you as well, um, <laughs> as it does for me to make these videos too. Cheers and beers to you all. We will be back with more beer reviews real soon. Uh, and until then, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take care of yourselves. Take care of others. And like I said, I'll see you real soon with another beer review.